Hey guys, I'm going to go over a basic tutorial for an anti-butterfly cap. So this is what it consists of. So it's just a variation of a wall plane with an anti-spin in different parts. What it composes of two different parts, the top half and the bottom half. The top half consists of just an anti-spin in, followed by an extension out. The bottom is exactly the same except for it's an extension in and an anti-spin out. So it's opposite to the top. So let's break that down a little bit for you so you can understand what's going on. So if you begin with just pendling your foil in where the heads are almost meeting, at the up point where the foil are going up, Go up and over and cross your arms. That'll make the first revolution of the anti-spin on the other side. So each hand is going to be going up the anti-spin over and then back. So once it goes to the top and gets this point over here, you're just going to bring your arm back over. Both hands are doing exactly that. Crossing and uncrossing. Crossing and uncrossing. I think the most, uh, probably not the most important thing, but the thing that makes it look really nice is if you can get the heads almost to meet up or kind of hover behind each other. With fire and with glow lights, it makes this really interesting sync pattern. While practicing this, try and switch which hand's on top. Like my right hand, my red boy, is on top this time, and now my left hand with the white boy is. So practice with switching each of those back and forth. And if you have to do it with one hand, do it with one hand. Uh, just so you know, this is done in reverse butterfly. And I'm starting at my sides, up and over. The bottom's a little different. It's kind of backwards to what we just did. Whereas up top, we went anti-spin in and over. The bottom's just going to be an extension in. So just a pendulum side to side. And once it hits the inside where your arms are crossed, that's where the anti-spin, the downbeat's going to happen. So each hand is doing this, like a bottom cap, just those three points. The hand extension to the center and out. And followed back by an extension or a long arm or a pendulum, whatever you want to call it. Drilling the bottom and the top halves by their own, with just an anti spin on either way and learning what the path is to anti-spin in towards your body or away towards your body is a very handy thing in the long term for us. I will say if you can keep the anti-spins for either the upbeat on the top half or the downbeat on the bottom half, you can keep that centered in your center line up and down your body, wall plane. It'll make the patterns much more crisp. It's time you just play with and find different ideas what to go with. So yeah. So all together, So to put them together on that extension point of the top where I'm coming out, I'm just crossing my arms and anti-spin. And at the out point here, I'm going back up. So it starts here, goes over, around in a big circle, arms crossed, anti-spin down, back up. So you're pausing for almost a beat in between these two spots. So, to play some variations, uh, you can add stalls into the side points and the center points of your anti-spins to the top and bottom half. So for the top half, you begin again with the pin looming in, and you to go up and over, stop, and then bring them back. So each hand is basically going to do just the anti-spin over top of each other. Left hand's the same way as the right hand. And when you put them together, reverse butterfly, up, stall, stall, stall outside, stall outside. And same thing as before, try and play with switching which hand is on top. My right hand's on top, left hand's on top, right hand, left hand. On the bottom, it's a little bit different because the top, it's easier because you're coming up and you're naturally going to go into a stall phase. 
on your own very naturally. You can stop the momentum of where the void's going down sides. On the bottom, since we're extending in and then anti-spinning, you have to create a new stall point. And that stall point is going to be at the same point at the top bottom part here at the center. And it's going to stall to your opposite side on each hand. So it's going to stall here and here. So this will give you a drill to play with for your horizontal stalls. You learn to kind of bounce with them as you saw, it will improve it greatly. And learn to just kind of let it float side to side. So on the bottom, you can extend or pendulum in and anti-spin stall, stall. So that's the bottom part. And then you can begin to switch it from the top to bottom. Um, there's a lot of variations in this. I don't want to go too far with this. But just to give you an idea, um, these outside points out here, left and right, that is a good spot for transitioning into other wall plane stuff as the foy heads are coming together. Um, it also is a really great transition for corkscrew. Because when they're both out, you can bring them right back into corkscrew. So you can use this as a transition spot between corkscrew and that. It's kind of bendy and not clean at the top with the corkscrew, but you can use it and you're spinning for transitioning. Um, and that'll depend on which hand is leading. You can do from the inside as they're coming in. So yeah, one more quick one for you. So you have these top halves that are back and forth. You can use these out points as plane shifting as well. You can use these out points to go across your body and back across, right? In the world of 3D or 360 spinning, whatever people want to call it. So you have this horizontal that you can use, which that horizontal spin is exactly the same as this. It's just bent to here. And you can mix those the same way as you're doing here. You can mix them in and across you. So you have a little bit of a variation. Um, you can also mix it up with the bottom. So if you play with it a little bit and get used to just this idea of the pattern starting, you can play with uh, one hand horizontal and one hand on the bottom. You can play with horizontal and flat. You can have one horizontal and one flat and wall plane. It takes a little finesse, it's a little awkward at first, but it can be kind of a fun techie thing to play with if you want, so you have more variations. So, yeah, enjoy.